Hello boys and girls. This is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This time, I'm going to show you how to vary the output voltage of your voltage adapter or cell phone charger. So that you have a different voltage output than the one provided by the adapter. This way, we'll be able to vary the voltage from 5 volts to 12 volts. From 12 volts to 30 volts. With a fairly simple method, which you can do at home without any complications. Stay until the end of the video so I can show you in detail how to make these changes to your adapter or cell phone charger. So, without further ado, let's continue with the video. First, some theory before moving on to practice. Switching power supplies or cell phone chargers control their output voltage with the help of an optocoupler and a Zener diode. This is the general method they use to control their output voltage. That is, the circuit responsible for delivering the voltage through this diode starts with a low voltage. It will start with 1 volt. Then it will go to 2 volts and so on, it will increase the voltage. Until when? Until that voltage exceeds the voltage necessary to operate the optocoupler diode and the Zener diode. For example, if I have a 4.7 volt Zener diode and the optocoupler diode requires 1 volt, it means that more than 5 volts are required for the optocoupler LED to light up. Therefore, the output of this power supply will be greater than or equal to 5.7 volts. Which will be enough for the optocoupler LED to light up. Closing the transistor circuit. by delivering a signal through the transistor to the control circuit. This way, the control circuit will stop raising the output voltage. The control circuit can be composed of several transistors, as is the case with this electronic board. Here you can see the Zener diode, and the optocoupler and the resistor that accompanies it. We also have this type of electronic board where you will also see the optocoupler. Here we have a programmable Zener diode, the TL431. And here we have the control circuit that will allow the voltage to be increased or decreased based on the signal it receives from the optocoupler. Therefore, this way, switching power supplies can control their output voltage and keep it stable. So, we are going to change the Zener diode. We are going to change it to a different value. We can use a 15 volt, a 10 volt, or a 4.7 volt diode to alter the output voltage and thus confirm what we're seeing in theory. So let's move on to practice to confirm the theory. Okay, first, let's confirm the output voltage of this cell phone charger, which should be approximately 5 volts. There we have 5.4 volts. So, we're going to replace the Zener diode in this cell phone charger with a 10 volt one. And we're going to see the voltage it delivers when we make that change. Okay, so we're going to remove this Zener diode and replace it with another diode. You can see that the cathode is on the left side.
we replaced it with a 10 volt one. The cathode is connected to the cathode. Okay, let's check the output voltage. Now, let's connect the cell phone charger and see the output voltage. We have 11 volts with the 10 volt center diode. The reason we have 11 volts is because not only the Zener diode is working, but also the LED in the optocoupler. Therefore, it gives us 11 volts of output. This way, you can alter the output voltage by changing the Zener diode in your charger. Now, to have a variable or adjustable output, let's look at another method. Okay, to get a variable output on our cell phone charger, we need to replace this Zener diode with a TL431, which is a programmable Zener diode. This programmable diode has three terminals. Reference, anode, and cathode. And their connections are quite simple. We have to connect the cathode of the TL431 to the cathode of the Zener and the anode to the anode. Pin 1, or reference, is connected to the center pin of the potentiometer. One like this one here. They would have to connect it to pin 2, or the center pin. You can use a potentiometer, or you can use either of these two trimmers. The trimmer or potentiometer values can be 5 kilohms, 10 kilohms, or 20 kilohms. The potentiometer connections would be as follows. Pin 1 connects directly to positive. Pin 3 or the other end would go directly to negative. And the center pin or pin 2 would go directly to pin 1 of the TL431. Now before making the connections, we have to set the potentiometer to a precise midpoint. For safety, I'm going to use this trimmer. I can adjust its value with a screwdriver. There. It would be at a midpoint. It's very important that you set the potentiometer to a midpoint or halfway. So, if your potentiometer is 5 kilohms, you have to measure between pin 1 and pin 2, 2.5 kilohms, or between pin 3 and pin 2, 2.5 kilohms you absolutely must set it to half the resistance of the potentiometer. Okay, let's move on to assembling the circuit. First, we remove the Zener diode. Now we'll install the TL431. Pin 1, reference. Pin 2, anode. Pin 3, cathode. We flip it over and bend the pins. This would be the cathode, and this would be the anode. Okay, now we'll solder the trimmer. Either end can be positive or negative. This pin is negative, and this one is positive.
The reference pin will go to the center pin of the trimmer. Okay, it's finished. Here we have the cathode, the anode, and the reference pin goes to the center pin of the trimmer. Okay, let's test it. Okay, our circuit is complete. There you can see the TL431. Now don't forget that you can't raise the output voltage to a value higher than the capacitor can handle which in this case is 16 volts. Therefore, work with values lower than that of the capacitor. There we have 4.3 volts. We're going to vary the voltage. We can lower the voltage or we can increase the voltage. There we have 9 volts. Now we have 12 volts. This way you can vary the voltage of your cell phone charger or power adapter to use it in different projects. Okay, guys, this concludes the video. And don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.